Gnome sexy. doesn't count. That's making fun of special ed people. Come at me. Listen, man. Welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos and most importantly, you know, right? Whatever the hell else we come up with this week, um, we're going to be talking about Epic because they confirmed something we already knew, and that is Linux is not on the roadmap for their stupid monkey store. And I've been killing angels with my gun heels. It's awesome. It's brilliant. And if you want to do it too, stay tuned. Linux Steam usage goes up. Well... Manjaro usage anyways, and we got to talk about developing games on Unreal Engine 4. If you're using Linux, don't. I think he's still doing Linuxy things, and back at work at Intel, and Flippit makes a good point, which inflamed some bruised egos. Ladies and, and gentlemen, Strider got a lot of this week. I know, it's kind of brilliant. Uh... <laughs> I'm back, baby. <laughs> Shut up, Strider. <laughs> All right, here we go. And I'm about to introduce you to fuckwits. Um, I'm old man, then you know me, you know me. That, that is, of course, our tame Canadian podcaster. And you know I'm Pedro, the only man who has ever successfully seduced a VCR, Mateus. <laughs> it was a beta max, but hey, yeah, man, okay, it was listen, a while ago. Listen, so. listen, man, I know you. You don't have to lie to me. You don't, I'm not your friend. You don't have to brag. <laughs> and everyone joining us live, we call them Shadow Realm Dynamic. And together, we form, you know it. Fuck you, YouTube cocaine Voltron. Mm, LGC <laughs> cares, motherfucker. No money for you, Ben. <laughs> Patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. Um, it's the wrong part of the show, Ben. You can't uh, say that right now. Oh, uh, hey, before we get started, would you like to see what's going on in each other's life organs? Um, if Speaking of Patreon, hey, man, I did a, I don't really call them studio tours. I'm like, this is the shit we have for 2019 edition where I walk around and kind of explain how everything's set up and ask, yo, if you get any questions, let me know because we're kind of doing some experimental shit and kludgy ways of making all of this work under Linux. So go check that out. Like if you want, whatever. I'm not your boss. What's up, J baby? Baka. Oh no, just uh, more, more <laughs> job <you>. hunting. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, uh, what, what, do you, what do you call it now? Now that people are back from the holidays, uh, they're starting to, do hiring sprees again, so I'm trying to see if I can find a new job. Also, been fucking around with the uh, Steam Link app. It's, it's a thing. Mm. Yeah, me. <laughs> and uh, well, over here, I'm back, baby. I'm really back. It it was two weeks of a lot of eating. If there's something that you can do when you go visit the family for the holidays, is you eat a lot. Did, did you have any monkey soup? No, 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 that's, a, again, that's a Brazilian thing. If you weren't watching the uh, the pre-show, you can then watch the, uh, like, the full show, full unedited thing, if you'd like. Uh, but, yeah, no, it uh, it's Christmas food in Portugal. It's pretty good. I'll, I'll, I'll give him that. That, that, that. That's too <laughs> wide open. I don't believe we have enough time yeah. to really dig into yeah, that. Yeah, to, to, to deconstruct this. <laughs> No. What what has been deconstructing over the break over over this holiday season is the horse. We've left it outside. It's been disintegrating from exposure, and it's barren and cold. It's the steam. After after two weeks, we got it right. Now that Pedro's back, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, Steam hardware surveys. Yeah, uh, you know, you know that thing that you get every once in a literal blue moon when like the moon turns blue and little monkey boys turn into giant apes and smash things. Um, yeah, they they posted some results. Uh, Linux usage has gone up by point zero two percent, and if you expand that, Manjaro usage is up by point zero five percent. Woo! Mm -hmm. I, I think, and of course we got we got to insert the rant about you know hardware survey results and how Valve has actual numbers and this does not accurately reflect the number of systems using Steam out there in the wild playing video games. No. So. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty you, interesting. You got a survey though. Okay, like no joke. First day of uh, 2019. What was that? Was that on Monday or some shit like that? Tuesday. Uh, Tuesday. I, Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah. Get up. Coming to you. Got everything on. Load up Steam. There's a survey. Oh, it finally happened. Third one, <laughs> motherfuckers. Third yeah, one no, in I six years too. of using Steam on Linux and nothing else. The last time I, I triggered it, it is because I threw up that wine version. I was trying mm -hmm. something on wine and it came up. 
I'm pretty good with that. I usually get like one a year, so maybe I'm just super lucky. Maybe this is like for the next eight years, I'm not going to get any Steam hardware service and nothing yeah. of value will have been lost. <laughs> yeah, no, I got it the uh, same day as Ven. It's like, oh, the Steam survey. Huh. Okay. <laughs> One of the good pieces of news is we are actually bigger than VR because we have that point eight, then another number after that. But if you want to talk about VR, it's only point eight. Now. Wah, wah. Turns out it's true. Yeah. Nobody likes to look like they're being faced fucked by a toaster. Says you, <laughs> Alan, <Hello>, man. <laughs> Shut up. Uh, no, this is all. This is going to be in the show notes. This is from Game Industry Biz. I just wanted to give that a mention because hey, we we got to win at something, right? Default, I mean, we've always default, been bigger than default. VR. <laughs> I don't know, man. If you would have said that to some people like last year, like, no, VR is the future. And I'm like, it's not ready yet, you guys. I'm like, no, I'm going to quit my job and start a game company to do VR. I'm like, all right, do it. I'm going to get some here, 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 Here's the thing, though. This time next year, we're not going to get a God damn it, VR over Tuckle Linux usage. Ah! Mm. D- that, Will call, it though? Because I'm call I'm calling you now. I bet you a nickel. I bet you a nickel. <laughs> because yeah, no, I, I somehow for some reason I don't really see VR going much of anywhere besides where it's already gotten. Because there has been nothing. There's been nothing happening with VR. I don't know. My favorite thing right now for the past couple of days because I know a couple of outlets have reported on. This latest usage and like our vibe. They're like, I don't know what they're talking about. They're in the pocket of big AR or some shit like that, right? Like big Oculus. Big Oculus. And uh it's not ready yet. It's not gonna work until it's just something you can put on and you don't have to worry about tripping to death. This the, the <laughs> this is this is true. Or or you get like a VR cafe with some nice padded walls because like <laughs> I, I have come very, I have come very very close to like wrecking someone's TV in a in a VR in a home VR setup. It's a thing that can happen. Here's the problem. Here's the absolute fucking problem with that. If you give me a padded room, I'm going to hurt myself more because then in my brain I'm like I got some leeway here. Yeah, no, I, I can run into the wall because it's padded. <laughs> oh, <Stunk. ow. laughs> it will be a thing. All right, um, Ike's still around, man. He's doing stuff. Oh, yes. So uh, one of uh, Ike's many projects was the Linux Steam integration. It's uh, it, it's one of the things that comes by default with Solus, but it was a completely separate project. It always was, and it still is. And now the big thing is that the GitHub repo is owned by Clear Linux, Intel's uh, Linux distribution project thingy. So it's... Uh, yeah, it's it's good to see uh, that Ike is uh, back at work at Intel, and he gets to maintain his own tool, basically. And it you know, kind of needs that update. I, I'm just <laughs> going to go ahead and say... Uh, that, that, that one's our fault. That, yeah. yeah, we're responsible for the uh, black screen of Nope. But... <laughs> Not bragging. But, I'm just saying. Uh, so, 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 yeah. Um, I mean, th- this this is a fork. So it's good to see that Intel is uh, doing some work yeah. on this front. I'm gonna say, spin the wheel of book a book about Intel laying the groundwork for their new GPU. They're gonna get some awesome, awesome Linux performance on on the Steams, right? Yeah, you guys. Maybe oh, yeah. not awesome Linux performance, but if they control the runtime, they can basically set the playing field to do whatever they want to do with that particular GPU on Linux. Just saying. Yes. <laughs> much, much, much the chagrin of AMD CPU and graphics yeah. users. Okay, we, we were definitely talking about that in the previous Super Shows and you know, wild speculation because AMD is going to be announcing all their nonsense at CES. And like, come on, give me the Navi card. That's awesome for like a buck and a taco. Do it. But you know for a fact the discrete graphics solution from Intel is going to work in, like NVIDIA day one on Linux. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I have, well, it, I listen, man. I love AMD. I got a wall of AMD over here, so fuck off. Um, you know, the Navi shit's not gonna work for a few weeks if we're lucky. Yeah, Navi is going to take its sweet time. Hopefully, it uh, the open source drivers will support it, you know, within a month, although that's probably a little too optimistic of an estimate. But I mean, yeah, no, it's it, it's uh. It's Intel. They have the money. They they can do it. <laughs> yes. 
And like, I don't, I don't know, like a, a lag, uh, like a one month lag between release and support's probably a good thing so that all the Windows users can find all the disgusting hardware flaws, like how these Navi cards will just blow up your computer or like kill your family and rape your dog or something. It, Why it's does a it buffer, yes. <laughs> but yeah, it's, no. It, it, uh, it's, it's the hand banana GPU. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, Linux Steam integration, it's uh, great to see, and it is good that it's being worked on, because when Proton came in, it opened a can of Nightmare Fuel for uh, if you were using the LSI to use like the distro native uh, libraries and do all of the interceptions of all the uh, libraries that it's calling, and then using the native versions. Yeah, uh, hence, that hence needed some fix. Proton. PCP, yes. baby. <laughs> okay, the big smash hit everyone's still talking about is that game that Valve dropped. Oh, wait. Art Art of Artifark. 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 No, <laughs> it's Art Artifark. Artifark. Artifarks, yeah. <laughs> and uh, well, starting, yeah, that guy. Uh, or it's, an ending. it's an Artifark. Fark. <laughs> there, I hit the mute button. You can get a word out. Yes. Uh, ending 2018 and Artifact, Valve's latest game, according to. Um, What's this website called? Get Hip. Get hip. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, it's not even in the top 100. So, yeah, it's an uh, artifact. Apparently, there were a lot of people playing it at launch. And uh, according to them, there were 7.79 million uh, total times played. And the highest player count uh, when comparing like concurrent players on Steam was number four. Which is pretty good. It puts it right up there with uh, PUBG and um, Counter Strike Go, Dota, a couple of the others. But yeah, no, ever since then, it's been dropping. And the average daily nowadays is around 3,000 people concurrent playing, which is still respectable considering how some games on Steam have like 10 or none. But yeah, it's uh, for a multiplayer game, having those few people playing it at once is probably not looking very good for Artifact. I don't know. You got to think about it a couple of ways, man. I mean, do you think maybe the uptick we're not seeing is because Valve wants money in exchange for this on top of, hey, do you want to play? That'll be more money. Or is it just not a good game? It's... Uh... It, it is a good game. Uh, as far as card games go, the mechanics are sound. It's uh, the, the big thing seems to be like the refund policy. There were a lot of people kicking up a big stink because if you open the starter pack, like the cards that they start you off with, you can't refund the game past that because that's an in-game purchase. So yeah, you're basically boned. <laughs> Uh, and yeah, a lot of people were being really, really naughty and, uh, saying that, oh, uh, with, um, with a monetization scheme like this, I'm never giving Valve money again. And yet here you are on the Steam forums. What? <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, like there, there's also the thing where it released in like the last two weeks of the year and like people are off doing stuff and not playing games also combined with the fact that no one's really playing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like the 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 definitely definitely a lot of the lack of adoption has to do with the asking price and the fact that you can't really earn cards in game. Uh, like I said, I'm I'm looking for I'm interested to see Artifact in one year after Valve realized no one's buying it and then they transition to a more free to play model. This, this is what I was about to bring up. I mean, do you think that will be the thing that genuinely kills it once they build a small, um, reliable? player set who's given up all the money and they're like it hey, lol joke free to play now here you get a special badge or some shit and you think that'll just so, 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 something like that or, or at least a long period enough where they can engage that like yeah anyone who was going to spend money on this has spent their money on this already mm -hmm. now we need to now we need a new wave of players hmm. all right uh that's our steamy news let's get into a few game updates believe it or not Very few. um free man <laughs> after nine years half-life 2 m mod is available for download. It improves the graphics, AI, VFX, sound, and more. I wanted to give this a mention because, hey, nine years. Better love story than Zen. Um, we're still waiting <laughs> on that, aren't we? It, 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 I don't want to put this. How do I want to put this? It, it's a nice improvement without trying to redo the intent. Plus, you can pick up the fucking guns. Come on. Yeah. Come you on. You can pick up the turret guns. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, the, 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 come on. The enemies no, will no. use like. Pedro, you're thinking, because we did meet the Freemans uh -huh. where we went all the way through this level. <laughs> Fuck this. Several, Several times. times. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, 
Being, being, well, no, th there, there's that one too that I was playing with where it was just like, hold this one corner and there's like people manning turrets and we were just getting slaughtered for like an mm -hmm. hour. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, like uh, it, the, the AI improvements are pretty interesting. Um, like the uh, enemies will use secondary fire. They'll um, try and outflank you and stuff like that. Um, like, I'm, I am curious though, uh, now that you mentioned it, if it will work uh, with Synergy particularly well. I'm not sure how Synergy cross compatibility with other mods works. Thank synergy you. works with other mods as soon as the Synergy dev goes, okay, is that mod done? Can mm. I start working on it so it's stable when I implement it? Then, yeah, because uh, that was uh, the same thing that they said with the. Uh, what was it? Black Mesa? With Black, Black Mesa. Mesa, yeah. It's like, yeah, when Black Mesa is done, I will implement it, not before. So, yeah. And then it'll be yeah. just as stable as Synergy. <laughs> <laughs> it might let, work. Let, 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 listen, you, you, gotta give, you gotta give Synergy some credit. This is a single player game that they oh, have yeah, multiplayer listen, man, into. I, I give it all the credit. It's just, the, come on. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's like, oh, yeah, that event you need to progress through a level. Yeah, it's not triggering. Why like in, not? In, <laughs> in the base game, they're like, oh, yeah, well, there's two known parts where you just can't get through it. Deal with it. Anyway, Star Control. <laughs> Yes. So, um, lots of lots of drama being thrown about here. If you've been watching Leonard French's channel, he's been talking about it recently this week. Mm -hmm. um, but Star Control, the overly glib, reductive version is that there's an ongoing, drawn out litigation between the IP cont uh, between some of the original makers of the original Star Control games, uh, who were contractors and had some additional rights within their contract, and Stardock, who had purchased the name and some of the rights to it. Um, now, um, the, the, the name of which is like been legitimately purchased. That's the one thing that these guys can agree on, but like game product identity, intellectual property is up for grabs here. So Stardock had, uh, filed for a restraining order to stop DMC takedown so that they could put their game on steam and GOG and make money off it. And the judge said, nope, no restraining order. Um, the original dudes filed their DMC takedown, um, GOG and steam complied. Um, and that that's that's where we are right now. Um, apparently, Stardock had to uh, lay off some folks as a result because you know they kind of needed this game on sale to continue functioning as a company. But the judge clearly said, you know, maybe you should wait until litigation finishes and you get a conclusion before you put your game on sale. And lo and yeah. behold, today, today I got an email from Humble. Oh, there's a new Stardock bundle because apparently they're hurting <laughs> for cash. Um, <laughs> But there, but yeah, that's that's the overly glib reductive version. Uh, Leonard French has a brilliant, brilliant breakdown of this. Uh, you should go watch his channel because he puts out some good stuff. Indeed, uh, um, yep. support that dude on Patreon. Yeah, that is one thing yeah. I watch every Sunday. Um, hundred percent. What is this? Is there any meat to this, or is it just a slap fight? It's a, a, a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B, because yeah. uh, Stardock, alleg <laughs> Stardock alleges that they're using in they they're just using the name. They're not really li relying on like uh, the existing canon of like alien races or stuff like that for their new game. This is like a new version. The other guys are saying, "Well, we designed all this stuff, so we should have rights to it." Oh, so it's it like Descent. Yeah, a little bit. It looks on honestly, based on what I read, it looks like Stardock is in the right. Uh, but they've also been doing some sketchy legal stuff. Actually, both sides have yes. been doing sketchy legal stuff, <laughs> which has made this all drawn out. And like, the, yeah, if you if you read the judge's briefs, the judge is just like not having <laughs> any of it. Yeah, the judge <laughs> just went full on. You guys are trying my patience, and yeah, no, uh, they tried the preemptive injunction because they saw the DMCA coming. It's like, no, 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 no. We want to put the kibosh on that, and the judge said no because apparently she's had it with both sides trying to. Uh, legal bullshit their way into this and if it's like reading through this it's like oh it's bethesda versus interplay but with a shoestring budget and if you know that particular branch of history is anything to go by stardock may have a shot because bethesda got the rights to fallout despite them only having bought the um the name, the name and the uh single player rights to develop a Fallout game, and Interplay retained the uh, multiplayer rights because they were working on Project V13 at the time. And, you know, irony of ironies, Bethesda, what they do with those multiplayer rights is Fallout 76. 
Yeah. <laughs> and you might be wondering, you're like, wait a minute, why, why are you talking about this? Well, the developers on the, in the Steam forums are like, yo, Linux is a definite possibility. This is a while back before, you know, when they were still making a game, when because it was going to be uh, using Vulkan mm -hmm. on the back end. And they're like, once we get that done, I think that's definitely something we could do. Then again, that's how many times have we heard that? Mm. Yeah. Like, oh, but why? <laughs> we never said anything about Linux. Come on. Yeah. But apparently, Star uh, Star Control Origins is not a terrible game. If you know Yahtzee Croshaw is anything to go by, that was one of his uh, best games of the year. So, oh, really? <laughs> so that happened. Since we're talking about stuff not yet on Linux, let's talk about something that's kind of on Linux. Te technically. Well, they, it's as much on Linux as Proton is on Linux. Right. Uh, well, it's uh, two Lego games, one of which I played uh, this week uh, on uh, Tuesday. And it's Lego Lord of the Rings and Lego The Hobbit, which have disappeared from sale. And originally people didn't know what happened. And on the fourth... Uh, Pedro, you, you want a, me to tell you what happened? What happened? Those, well, motherfuck happened? those motherfuckers hit me with seven copyright strikes. I sent Frank after him. <laughs> <Woo>! <laughs> yeah, I'm not playing The Hobbit next week. Don't Frank's worry. Back. <laughs> I don't have seven copyright strikes on our damn channel anymore. That's all I'm saying, man. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's... Um... Uh, on the 4th, a Warner Brothers representative uh, said that LEGO Lord of the Rings and LEGO The Hobbit will no longer be available for sale in digital stores. The games will remain in players' libraries if they already own them. That's it. That's all they said, which means the games are pretty much gone. If you didn't have them, you're gonna have to pirate them from now on. Thank you for making my Steam library more valuable. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I I have a question. Do you think do you be, because this this is uh, related to uh, Warner Brothers Interactive? Do you think this have, has anything to do with uh, Amazon's Lord of the Ring thing? Maybe maybe, maybe they scooped up some rights and now whatever it's Warner Brothers has is expired. Yeah. Oh, it's definitely there was... I, I, a hundred percent a music licensing thing because like one thing I did gleam, you know, we didn't get copyright strikes, but they're like you can't monetize this claims. video, yeah, for all the time. Claim like seven different claims, yeah. It's amazing. It's like I was almost trying to explain that, but thanks. Um, <laughs> when they did that, I saw all that. There's a ton of music in that thing, so that mm -hmm. by itself is. A copyright nightmare. There was like a, a racing game that got pulled from Steam because they couldn't work out a deal. Yeah, we, 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 I think we actually talked about that. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, th this is something that happens. But but you're kind of surprised to see it with like something backed by Lego and something with the rights with that. So mm -hmm. hey, it was yeah, free. Lego Warner Brothers. They can't even get their own copyright in order to be able to sell their games. That that. That should tell you just how bad copyright law is in the U.S. Mm. I mean, Le Lego, Lego copyrights in general, because they have, they have, they have uh, they have the implementation rights for like so many so many franchises from like Warner Brothers and Marvel and DC. It's it's yeah. it's it's, it's, it's it's actually amazing they're able to pull that off. Well, they got to do something. Their patent on um the Lego itself ran out, mm -hmm. and they didn't Disney it. They're like, no, let's add more time to that. All right, so. <laughs> We're on the topic of Proton. Let's talk about something I played, which was Bayonetta. Kind of liked it. Played a little bit on Friday, but in order to do that, I had to do some fuckery. And you too can play it on the latest Proton version 316-6. You don't have to do too much fuckery with it, but you do have to download a custom NTDLL override. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? And just the NTDLL, you got to drop that in. I'll show you how to just set your launch uh, launch options for that nonsense. And Bob will, in fact, be your uncle. There's nothing more to it. Now, like, but wait a minute, I tried it and loaded it around just try to save something. Doesn't work. And if yeah. it does manage to work, it won't launch anymore after that. And, and check out this brilliance. The save file's encrypted, so you can't... Not the save file, but the config file. So you can't manually change it. <laughs> yeah. Outside of that, pretty fucking interesting game, man. Um, I took a minute to actually play it, and I was like, what the fuck? Um, thanks, everybody who showed up last night to play that. You have experienced that. I was like, okay, fine, I'm rolling with this. <laughs> Yeah, it's 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 very much like a Devil May Cry style game. I played it on uh, Xbox 360. I still have my uh, box copy of it. Um, I think uh, like the dude developed Devil May Cry, didn't he? 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, apparently, he also spent like twenty hours designing Bayonetta's ass. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, no, this this was a thing. Like, I, I wanted it to be the perfect ass, so I like devoted resources to like picking the perfect ass. I, I, I mean, it's platinum. It's Japan. They could get away with it. She's, <laughs> the main character. What I dig about the main character is like just so over the fucking top. I a lot of people. I was like, ah, it's over sexualization. I was like, no, it's just doing that in the other direction. So, it's burlesque. <laughs> one thing I'll say about this, though, her suit is made out of her hair. Yes. Yes. In the second Bayonetta Part Two, she has short hair. So everyone, think about that while we talk to about our. Uh, <laughs> New games coming up on Steam. Wait, wait, listen, just don't, don't don't use Nair on your private parts. That's all I'm saying. Um, Space Ribbon. That's all we got to talk about this week. Because, hey, man, we're in the void until mm -hmm. after CES kicks in. This one comes in as a price of a free download, which I downloaded. 34 reviews, and it's mixed. What is it? Psychedelic space racing on an infinite... That panda it's... is cursed, man. There's like... <laughs> Yeah, that, that that that's some pedo bear type shit in the top on the top uh, right hand corner there. I tried this and it has local multiplayer, but that's about it. I think Fox is like it doesn't have online multiplayer. I was like, I don't think it said it did, but no, it frame pacing comes to mind when I loaded it up and I tried it. Hey, it does support the HTC Five and Rift. Uh, <laughs> do we need anything crazy to play it? No, Steam OS fourteen forty MD sixty four. Good on you. For some reason, you need an internet connection for fuck all reason. It doesn't have multiplayer. Um, <laughs> I tried this, and while it was running reportedly with a Steam overlay, and I was just running at 1080p, I wasn't running it at uh, 2160 with the 980. It it was it, it definitely got chuggy, even though it was at 60. Yeah. So it's got some pacing <laughs> issues, and it's a fuck around racer with like I it, the interface looks like it was created like i had made it in inkscape it's bad <laughs> <laughs> we, we and we know we all know how ven can't use inkscape right <laughs> yeah no it's a it's a racy game in space where you uh basically have a space panda or a space tiger that barf out a track and your goal is to be the first one to boop the uh particular mammal's head I, I didn't See, I, know. Man. I, 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 I got to the end of the track, and that was it. And I was like, "All right." Based on based on the trailer, I thought you were running away from like the creepy space panda, or the creepy that space I'd tiger. Be more interested in man. Yeah, it's like <laughs> no, some weird ass Pac-Man shit. <laughs> that that's worse. Yeah. God, it, God damn it, devs. Dude, on, I mean, Annika, come limited. on, man. Um, it'll be like the revenge of sexual harassment panda. <laughs> I like that they say in the little blurb. They say amazing immersive space VR mode has to be seen to be believed. Yeah, I'm sure it has to be seen for you to reenact what the panda slash tiger are doing with the track you're just going to listen i apologize listen, man. I, I apologize because these two motherfuckers are hung up on pandas man they were touched by pandas or something i don't know man i mean the the, the that seal song been kissed by a panda on the space track yes um <laughs> that old classic <laughs> Okay, coming coming up next, we talk about distro fragmentation and why it's killing Linux, and also how to develop on a dying platform like Linux. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, get ready. We don't have a whole lot of news, but we have a whole lot of... Uh... I guess leftover Christmas Way holiday uh, you, this merriment. Is, this is your first day back in 2019, and you've forgotten how to sell our merchandise. 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 No, 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 I haven't forgotten it. As I was saying, there's still some leftover uh, holiday merriment going about. So holiday we're going to do merriment. a whole lot of thinking that? of the people, shall we? <laughs> Hang on a minute. I got to uh, type something up. Ho ho holiday <laughs> <Okay>. merriments. <laughs> You know, you know, and if you if you want to partake in some of the holiday misery, because fuck that merriment, you can head on over to LinuxGamecast.com. Click the support button. We got all sorts of fun stuff that you can click on to support us. Amazon so affiliate links, new eggs, so affiliate confusing. links. Ah. Yeah. Yeah, just we, we got all, all the stuff at the top where you can just buy something for yourself and we this get a little QR bit of a code. Cut. Are you trying you to suck? hack me? Yes. <laughs> Your yes, mattresses I am. suck. I'm not buying any. 
Indeed. <laughs> uh, you can also give us money through PayPal, or if you want to be super fucking cool, you can also head on over to patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast. Become a Patreon, get access to our Discord, show notes, all it's all it's all on that page you can read. I I believe in you, and if you can't, well, I still believe in you. Hey, you can, check you can, this out. <laughs> we got something just for patrons. Uh, I rolled this out, and you guys are going to have it. Uh, I walked around. Well, that's a couple things. Preview Sh- Super Shows. Go check that out, because you can watch it there while we uh, watch it together. Uh, yeah, come check out our entire studio. Walked around, was like, I pointed at things, rambled, looked at a light, blinded my dumb ass, and tried to explain how some of the things worked. I even gave everyone a peek inside of our tech closet. It's got a, it's got a hanger. It's got it's got it's got one <laughs> hanger where the, yeah, where the regular singular. where your hangers are supposed to go. <laughs> one singular hanger, man. But yeah, uh, um, no, that's serious. Seriously, thanks for making this possible. You let us do a lot of shit, and we get to say things that we don't have to worry about being demonetized. We don't have to worry about that fat twelve dollar a month YouTube check that we get, and we're able to do things like Pedro is able to bring you Lord of the Rings. Jordan's thrown down Borderlands, and I brought a little Bayonetta, but we'll be back with the group trivia shit on Friday. It's going to be awesome. Coming up next week, have we already thanked all the beautiful people? No, we, 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 got, we got two people we got to thank uh, this week. Uh, Kim O, not uh, Kim Jong, um, they, they pre- increased their <laughs> pledge, so thanks a lot. And Alexander oh, yes. is our latest Patreon, so thanks a lot, Alexander. You're a really cool dude. Yeah. Alexander. Alexander. <laughs> Well, it could be Alex Rander. Alex Rander. Alex, <laughs> Alex, <laughs> Al- Alex Rander, yeah. And we also don't want to forget, Frank, all the beautiful people who have helped us put together the studio. They're permanently and forever will be listed. No, you can oh, never yes. be removed um, from Frank's fuck wall and things on our wish list. All right. Uh, let's get into Ethan dropping some mad oh, logic. Oh, yes. I so, love this. Uh, I, I want to get going this as a back. tattoo. Yes, <laughs> going back to last Sunday, uh, one of the last few days of 2018, uh, Flippity Oh, you may know him as Ethan Lee or that one guy that makes Linux ports in less than a minute. Uh, he put out a tweet, a very simple tweet. It's like game devs. And then you have Linux to niche, Fire TV, Apple Watch ties, and NVIDIA jump whatever Mm -hmm. uh and it's like yeah it's basically a thing saying it's like yeah linux is too niche but then here you are putting out games for the fire tv the apple watch whatever uh and it kicked up a storm and you can tell because there's 2.1 thousand likes on that particular post and and, and some excellent discourse yeah oh yeah there's so um, many i want to tap into that because (laughs) Like, for real, Ethan made a fair damn point with that. Now, yes, there's also some fair damn arguments, because a couple of those platforms, the platform creators will pay developers to put something on their piece of shit. Uh, um, yes. This is a true thing, 100%. <laughs> However, not shipping dependencies doesn't equal, you know, distro fragmentation. Ethan kind of pff, dropped that mm-hmm. out. He's like, shut the fuck up. However... Yep. Our good friend Ben from Planetary Annihilation chimes in with um For, he, formerly a Planetary <laughs> Annihilation. Okay. Formerly, yes. <laughs> well he says, Hey man, we ship Planetary Annihilation on Win, Mac, and Linux. Linux users were big vocal parts of the Kickstarter forums. In the end, they accounted for not 0.1% of the sales, but 20% of the auto. You're responsible for auto generating. Okay, I guess it worked under Linux, unlike under mm-hmm. Windows. Um, crashes and support tickets, uh, mostly GFX related, would totally skip Linux Ooh. LOL. Um, all right. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, the, we, 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 we let out this old gem. I don't, I don't, I don't know, because like, he, he freaking puts it in the tweet. And it's emblematic, mm-hmm. right? Point, uh, 20% of auto-reported crashes and support tickets, all graphics driver related. Usually, this happens when you release a game with really, really poor test coverage. And oh, yes. you don't actually you <laughs> don't actually validate that things work on the operating systems that you claim to support. Now, I was going to say that, uh, I was originally going to say that um, this is also a result of just clicking export and shipping. But no, this is actually done on a custom engine. Which yep. means that if you insist on using a custom engine, prepare to get take on all of that technical debt and making sure that your engine runs properly under Linux. And when, when he says Linux drivers are very, very poor, these days, Linux drivers are more often more compliant than whatever ships in OS X, which he does 
to be to his defense, he does say OS X created a bunch of problems as well. And I'll 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 give I'll give him this. This was de- this was being developed in 2014 when drivers on Linux weren't the greatest thing. You still had FGLRX poking around. People mm-hmm. still tried to. People were still not 100 on that. But again, this comes back to if you insist on using your own custom engine, <laughs> Valve don't thought it checks was. your butt can't cash. <laughs> Hashtag Steambox. One thing I like, though, yeah. um, you know, some somebody's like, hey, Ben, you know, about Linux causing all those problems, Mang. Maybe. Oh, yeah. Maybe, that, Mang. that was uh, just the cherry on top, wasn't it? Oops. Yeah. <laughs> um, he, to his credit, he came back. He says, As a follow up for me throwing Linux under the bus in 2014. I've been told by those actually involved. Hmm, that's kind of telling right there mm-hmm. with the Linux stuff. This wasn't true. I probably just stopped paying attention to Linux issues at a time when everything was broken. How you say, oh, womp womp. Now that's just perfect. You have a dev, provedly, admittedly, talking out of his ass to shit on a platform that he has very little demonstrable knowledge of and she basically just goes on twitter and admits to that at that's just perfect here's the shit icing on the cake though is that no one cares about this no one cares about the retraction this is fucking fox news syndrome where yeah he's he, he has done his big media facing conversation that is entirely wrong he admits that he's wrong but what he said is still outdoor there. People will still reference it, and the discourse will not change. It will continue to have this anti-Linux FUD that pervades game development. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, on top of that, you had uh, the developers, Tommy Ruffins from Super Meat Boy and the developer for Democracy, staunchly defending the other poor indie dev from the mean Linux users, pointing out his ineptitude. I mean... <laughs> Really? Really? I don't know, man. I mean, I was following this thread, and, and, you know, here's the thing. All right. When you got team meet, and you're like, yeah, Linux is something we may or may not consider. It's like, motherfuckers, you've released one game in eight years. Mm -hmm. Fuck right off. Sorry. (laughs) It was a good game eight years ago, and the follow-up to that's more of the same. But you got Igulus to do your shit, so it worked, eventually. Yeah. Um, Mm. One of the problems... That we do see, and I, I following through this thread, were like, hey man, we released a Linux port, and I mean, it totally came out like barely a year after the initial port, we had poor sales on that. You don't fucking say, Brad. You don't fucking yeah. say. That an entire, how many bundles was it in between that? How many times was it on sale? Hmm. Did you bring that up? No, you didn't bring that up, because you know what? Yeah. People probably already had it by that point. You know, we, we're we going to be seeing this a lot, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, especially with Proton, because now getting a Linux native port is going to be considered, not by us, but I would say by the vast majority of people, a bonus soda. Like, I can already run it. I'm running Linux, man. I can run your fucking Tinker Toy operating system video games just fine. <laughs> Maybe I'll get a native version, too. Who and knows? Proton will certain uh, Proton. Well, it it won't. It's not that it will. It it's already been doing that, uh, but it's yeah. No, we need that native version. So he, and, and 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 let's go. We need we need the button valve. We need the button. And and to to, <laughs> to tie it into the next story, the, the 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 whole Proton mess is just going to make Linux gaming worse over the next couple of years because now we're getting new stores that will either outright not support Linux or be acquired by companies that will not support Linux. Vis a vis, no Linux for you. That's right, man. Oh, yes. We'll talk about <laughs> towards, man. Um, Merkelaka, I'm not even trying the rest of that, man. It's like Yo, Merkelaka, Serge, Kamehameha. what's up? Please drop a comment on Epic Game Store for Linux so that folks don't bother. So that folks don't bother support with it or in English, whatever. Um, <laughs> Surge, man, uh, the not the drink from the late nineties, but Surge Steam himself. Steam Spy guy gets back. He's like, "Hey, man, it really isn't on the roadmap right now. Doesn't mean it won't change. Yes, it fucking does. Uh, in the future, <laughs> it's just we have so many features to implement, like something other than a fucking checkout basket. Is that what you meant to say?" 
<laughs> the what the, you know the things that they didn't realize is that steam already did it's like oh steam cloud saves oh really easy uh Dude, multiplayer talk, networking that's what i'm about to say talk to any fucking developers uh, done multiplayer anything they can't say a lot about it because of ndas and shit steam works 100 percent is hot yeah. shit <laughs> valve oh, have the infrastructure I'm for that you NDA, release us you release a store uh, nowadays, you have to at least be competitive when it comes to features. Epic isn't. Pedro, Pedro, <laughs> you're already hating on them and they just started to wonder they want to support Linux. Yeah, I, I mean, I mean, you, you're being you, toxic, you, Pedro. You're entitled. Even, even GOG yes. is starting to crawl Pointing towards the feature parity, parity with, with um, Steam, at least on Windows anyways, not on not on Linux, because we're never going to get that native Galaxy client. Ever, oh, hell ever, no. ever, 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 ever. Lucius um, is going I, to support the uh, GOG API before GOG ever supports no, yeah, uh, L L Galaxy L on Lutris, Linux. Lutris just needs to, like, Str Strider, hear, hear me out. Start working on a easy multiplayer API. I guarantee people will gobble that shit up. All I have to say to this oh, yeah. is, some, some prize, motherfucker, what did you expect? Yeah, no, I seriously. Mean, I vote no more coverage until it's they epic. drop it one way or another. And now that you've typed that in the show notes, we're going to cover it every single week. I'm just going to do it out of spite. <laughs> yeah. the, the Epic Store <laughs> Linux update of the week. Yeah, still not Demandated. on Linux. No, it's going to be still great, not on man. It's going to be great. And he's saying, hey, Pedro, what's up? And Pedro sent me back the text. He's like, oh, not, not, not much stud. And I'm like, hey, by the way, you know the Epic Store, right? Um, <laughs> still hey, not on Linux <laughs> hey everyone speaking of Lutris I do want to give this a quick plug because Strider was very proud about it because he stayed up super all late night and uh, there's now a deb to get the PPA up and running for Lutris yay only yeah. took him how many years Strider <laughs> 5.0 five, five, 5. beta yep it's the thing go check it out put it in your face coming up next yes up next. All right. So, Game of Sutra. Sometimes they publish some interesting articles. This might be one of them. This is by David C. Drake. You can find the links to all this in our show notes. Gaming and game dev on Linux. I mean, it's a fairly comprehensive article about the various gaming options under Linux. They br he brings up uh, Proton, Discord, um, some some of the limited VR stuff, open source games, engine re-implementations, and um, just for people who like well, gaming on Linux, that that's the thing. Yeah, here here's another one of the 70 billion articles about this very topic. Um, then he also talks about game development for people who are interested in developing games under the Linuxes. And he talks about um, a bunch of the open source tools like Blender and Tiled and Audacity and LibreOffice if you need to, you know, script your game. Um, open shot if you hate yourself. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, but... Uh, he 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 does bring up Godot, but he's like, I haven't I haven't used this at all. My, my is, but Unreal Engine is available on Linux and it's powerful. And listen, 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 listen. guys, guys, mm -hmm. got to address okay. this. If you're right. going to use Unreal Engine four on Linux for game development, you are going to have a bad time. There are features that are not implemented, i.e., the asset store, that thing that's supposed to speed up game development. No, you need you need a Windows partition for that. And I honestly pity the first time game dev who looks at this and says, yeah, you know what? I'm going to develop my game on Linux and I'm going to use Unreal Engine 4. And then I'm never going to use Linux again because that experience was so, so poor that I, I can't. I, it, it, it will fool you as somebody who's played around recently with building, getting everything set up um, for Unreal Engine. It lies to you, man. You get the demos rocking and rolling, export them, Vulcan, it, you can do it. You can make a thing, you can launch it, and you're like, ooh, I can run around this thing. This is going to be a... Once you're about elbow deep, that's it's too late to turn back, and you realize you're already kind of fucked. <laughs> so if, keep if, that if in you're, mind. If, if you are going to develop games under Linux, you should probably use Godot. Yeah, you just, just use Godot, seriously. Uh, the, our uh, resident uh, developer, well, other than Strider, uh, <laughs> uh, Foxy, uh, he very, very much recommends Godot, and he's basically always foaming at the mouth whenever there's new uh, news coming out of Godot. And, uh, oh, what was it? Leadworks. When, uh, when, <laughs> when you gave him Leadworks, uh, remember his, uh, his reply? It's like, never do this to me again. Well, to be to be fair, Clint Clint gave us like the gimped version of Leadworks that like you can do anything with. 
So, yes. <laughs> and to be fair to Clint, you know, when I'm being Clint, Clint's like, you guys make fun of me a lot, but I still like you. So here, you can have a copy. So maybe it was a little tit for tat, right? That, 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 yeah. That's fair. <laughs> perhaps. perhaps. Um, one thing I do want to point out in this article, uh, dude took a swipe at XFCE. So uh, I, I just got to put the hammer down. The entire article's invalid. Can't trust uh, to be fair, sense. he took the hammer down at Gnome, and then he said that he kind of sort of liked XFCE. Gnome XC. doesn't count. That's making fun of special ed people. Come at me. Listen, man. I, I, XFCE has its fucking problems. There, there are a lot of features that should have been implemented a long ass time ago that XFCE just does not do. 414 is uh, right around the corner, man. Any day now. <laughs> We'll, 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 we'll just be like fucking skeletons by the We'll all just look like Frank by the time that happens, man. <laughs> all right. Footsie tootsies. All right. Footsie tootsies. This is not quite Linux related. Um, I suppose it wouldn't be too difficult to get this running under Linux, but it is a 2D fighting game where you, 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 you jump and you punch. Uh, they, they have an Android version. They have a Windows version. This is done in Unity, though. Mm -hmm. And given given how simple this game actually is, it would probably be trivial just to import the project into Unity, click export, and you'd have like a fairly complete, feature complete version of this game. Um, it's hosted. This this page is hosted on GitHub. I don't. Is the source available? I couldn't find anything. I there. was under the impression it was. As bad uh, to be. It's like. <laughs> Research yeah, things we do not do on this show. <laughs> yeah. the, 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 this, this was the one thing we didn't research. I spent most of my time reading into that star control thing, <laughs> trying to trying to digest all that. Um, but yeah, it's. I mean, it, it could work. And, and hashtag Android is Linux, you guys. I don't know. <laughs> yes, there is some of the source available. You don't get any of the Unity bits, obviously, but it, it is there. If you go to GitHub.com forward slash high fight just h i fight for it slash footsies it's it's there man. ha all right. <laughs> all right so there, there there you go you can download you can you can go find that one forum post that has the working unity development environment for linux well, i like the whole idea behind yeah. it is like i'm trying to make the simplest fighting game in the world and it's like but they've already made mortal kombat 4 but uh <laughs> you can try this i mean it this is retro enough to where it might be something to fuck around with or something to learn from you know it's yeah uh and he says it's a really basic uh like sort of test of a fighting game or the mechanics of a fighting game so you have the hit boxes all the detection of where the moves would connect where your character is standing or the moves that you need to do on the controller to do like the special moves so this isn't so much a game as it is a project to maybe help the developer in future release a fighting game which would be nice well it, it, it's it's kind of interesting too i i like these projects that like attempt to attempt to reduce a game to like the barest minimum constituent yeah. parts you could you could do to or you could have to make it a game of that genre because oh, i got an idea it, for it, one man it, it's just uh, going yeah. to be a yeah payment processor with a shopping cart I'll take your money uh, <laughs> that's called the epic store it's the base element of a game so just... <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah, the the bit. no, but like it 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 really requires you to like develop a very nuanced understanding of what makes a game that specific that specific type of game. And these these sort of projects are interesting. And when the source is available, you can build it. It's good stuff. Coming up next, um, we build log cabins. We might shoot ourselves. Stay tuned and find <laughs> out. Blam blam. You know, lots of planets have a north, but not everyone has a north guard, which is the game that we're throwing chairs at today. Welcome back to the Chairquisition. This is where we take a game, we tell you if it launches, how it performs, the graphics and the controls, and then we tell you how fun we thought it was. And this all gets rated on an arbitrary metric based on lawn chairs, because why not? Um, this game was developed by Shiro Games. You can pick it up for around twenty nine ninety nine USD. Uh, it's developed on the Heaps engine, which I had never heard of, but it's interesting. And what is it? Northgard is a strategy game based on Norse mythology in which you control a clan of Vikings vying for the controls Vikings. of a mysterious newfound continent. Uh, Pennywise bought us some copies for this. And also, yeah, Castlevania, man. Lord's man, I'm just saying this guy, I think this game is a ripoff of... Um... 
<laughs> I, I mean, yeah, I, I came in expecting like a strategy game, and then I had to fight like ice giants with like a no, whip. Like, what the hell? Yeah. Right? I was, I, I, I was, I was very confused. Um, <laughs> there, there we go. All right, so let, let, let's let's get into the technical aspect of the review. Then, how did it function on the Ubuntu's? How did it function? We got three distros. The developer's worst nightmare. Um, over here, I'm running a very bog standard. I'm running the better work on this. Uh, 1804 LTS. We're doing that. We're rocking that with a Ryzen 1700. As always, 16 gigs of RAM, 980. This should run. And you know what? It runs great. It works great out of the box. And I'm only kind of kidding. Actually, I'm 100% kidding because it, uh, even though it does function, no problems with it whatsoever. There are no options to adjust resolution or run it in a window. So you better like, uh, in my case, A, you better have something that can push 3840 by 2160. Fortunately, the old crusty 980 pulled that off. And you Better like running full screen on whatever monitor it decides to launch on because there's no windowed option. Wah, wah. Performance, hmm, I'm guessing it's running around 60 at 2160. Fuck if I know because it doesn't work with Steam Overlay. Good going on that. It's kind of impressive. Um, it looks nice for a nice looking mobile game. And uh, let's talk about controls. It's was, it's laid out logical, it's rebindable. There's nothing to complain about. You're looking at it and you're like, oh, it's like ZAD or anything like that. And you're like, yeah, it everything you would expect except for default middle click doesn't allow you to move around on the map. And I don't know why I thought that should be there, but I kind of did, I'm not dinging anything for that. But you'll get three chairs, but I'm gonna have to ding you one. Should ding you two for that resolution thing, no windowed mode and really? Overlay, what is this, 2014? Well, sorry, 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 sorry to piss on your parade, Ven, but there is in fact a windowed mode, and you can't adjust the resolution. It does the Victor Vran thing, where if you put it in window mode, you have to like manually expand the window, and then we'll just uh, adjust the resolution. <laughs> Let me break this news we heard. Where's that hidden? Because it sure as hell under display options. It absolutely yeah, is on display untick, options. Yeah, you just untick the full screen thing. I didn't see yeah. it, baby. Uh, the, well, well, okay, so I'll, I'll get to that in a hot second. Does it launch on Fedora 24, 64-bit with the i7-6700K and the GTX 1080 Ti? Yes. Yes, it does. Performance-wise, Ven is correct. Steam overlay doesn't really work on this, so you can't really tell how it's performing. At 1080, it's fine at UHD. I thought it was a little chuggy, but that may have just been me. Maybe it, maybe I'm doing too many of the drugs. Um, but the performance is fine. Graphics, yeah. So UI scaling, number one. Number one. Um, all the text is super tiny if you launch it on a UHD monitor. You gotta, you gotta manually adjust the UI scaling and don't put it in window mode afterwards, otherwise the UI gets hyper cramped. Didn't have that problem out of the box. Yeah. UI scaling was correct. Uh, yeah, for me it was set to 1x, I had to switch it to uh, 2x. Hmm. Um, yes, so full screen though is a little weird though, because you got two options. You have full screen and exclusive. And if you untick either of those, it goes into a Windows mode. So you can't have any of those polygamous uh, rev resolutions. You got to be exclusive. You only have you only have the one. Um, and yeah, that that's pretty much it. Graphics wise, yeah, it's it looks about as good as any given strategy game done in the past five six years. Uh, controls, yeah, you uh, left click to select, right click to go do things, and was to um, move around. And sometimes right click has an additional context thing. Um, if you're if you're uh, clicking on the individual units on the bottom right hand side, if you're watching the video, um, right clicking uh, right clicking one of those guys will just select all of the units of that class. Um, so for uh, for the technical aspect of the chair position, I'll give it four chairs. Everything seems to work. On Solus with the GTX 1080 and the Ryzen 5 1600, it launches just fine. It comes with something called, by default, it uh, sets it to automatic V-Sync. I couldn't tell what it does differently to regular sync to V-Blank. Because, yeah, according to the uh, NVIDIA little overlay thing, since the Steam overlay wasn't working, I just went to the NVIDIA drivers like, yeah, put the thing on screen. And, uh, yeah, no, it was running at 60, so... Yeah, did, did, I guess it that works just fine. Uh, the graphics, yeah, there's uh, no resolution options whatsoever. Uh, you have um, full screen and a tick for exclusive full screen, which isn't really a thing on Linux, because that's not how OpenGL and X does full screen windows. But hey, whatever. Uh, it, on my end... The full screen worked as intended. You just unticked it if you wanted to run in a window. And 
the thing with UI scaling is, I don't know how they're doing it, but if you scale it to 2x, you can actually see like the blurry little blown up pixels. So it, everything looks just a little bit blurry on the UI. The controls, it actually surprised me because it lets you rebind just about everything. So on my end, four chairs. <laughs> All right. Well, there you go. Men, men, many issues aside, it seems to run fine. What about fun, Ven? Did you have fun playing this game? Had a fucking blast, man. What are you talking about? I don't know. What are you talking about? I'm talking about how much fun I had with this <laughs> game, Jordan, because it was delightfully generic as hell. It kind of went like this. Build shit. Build more shit. Explore. Try to keep people happy. Colonize another area. Build more shit. And you're two hours in wondering what the fuck you should be doing. At least I was. I'm not a clever man, but we've established that. Two hours in, I kind of feel like I better have the slightest fucking idea what's going on. I didn't. I didn't, Brad. It does have multiplayer, but unfortunately, I was only able to check it out at 6.30 p.m. on a Saturday where a whopping 10 people were playing it in the world. That was it. That was spread out, too, over like nine servers. I guess it's kind of like Civ. If Civ was made with crayons, some glue sticks, and a few extra chromosomes. But if you like games like ZAD, uh, keep playing ZAD. It's a better game. You know, I'm sorry, but... I'm not sorry. Northgard left me with nothing more than a frosty hate boner for what it is. And apparently, the MSRP for hate boners is around $29.99. Is it a poorly done game? No. They put some work into it. They want to say mobile. They're going for an art style. It just happens to look a lot like a mobile game. Honestly, if it was like a $10 title... Maybe pick it up with a friend if you want to do multiplayer through Steam. Uh, that could be a possibility. But fuck all. It's I talked about this in our pre-pre-super shows and was getting into it, figuring it out. It's like, this works. Like, all of these games work. And it gives you tutorials. Like, hey, this basic shit you've been doing for 30 years is implemented. And like, that's neat. Then it goes... Fuck off, figure out the rest. Like, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm building breweries. I'm trying to keep people happy. And uh, do, do I go over here? Do, do I build a dock? What do you want me to do, game? Mm. So, yeah, didn't have a fun time with it, especially not at that price. I can't recommend anybody picking that up. It's got good reviews, though. I mean, yeah, it's, it's a confidently done game, but what, what they've really done is they've taken a 4X game and added some real-time elements to it so you can wait for things to finish. I mean, the waiting reduces as you progress just because you'll upgrade your guys and they can do things faster and you'll have more stuff to do so you're not really paying attention to the clock timing out as your scout tries to clear the next area so that you can colonize it so you can build the buildings to get the resources together to build more buildings so you can get more <laughs> units to adjust your happiness score because if you're Vikings aren't happy, they don't fuck. So that's definitely a thing. Honestly, like this is this isn't the sort of lonely fun that appeals to me. At, I mean, at least there's multiplayer, but again, there's not really much in the way of people uh people actually playing this game online. Um I I mean like 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 I said, it's it's competently done. If I sit down and describe how the game works, you'll be like, Jordan, this is how every other Forex game works. And you'd be right. Um, it doesn't really do anything original, but what it does, it does competently well. I just don't really find this sort of game all that entertaining. Like with Civilization, you can get some people and do like couch multiplayer. You could do play by email multiplayer if you're so inclined. There's lots of ways you can make your own fun there. And honestly, I can't find too much wrong with it other than the fact that it's generic Viking game number 87,542. But... It it doesn't really do anything special. Um, it there's no there's no real hook for me to get me playing beyond like the hour and change mark. So I mean I'll g I'll give it one chair. I don't have an irrational hatred for this game. It's just not really my my jam. Yeah, Jordan's description is uh you know hate border aside is the <laughs> uh, is the border? most fitting. <laughs> no, Ven had the hate border, but uh yeah, it's a uh, real time four X exponentially. Had the hook. Yes, exponentially increasing timers and costs for exploring. It's like, oh, you want to take over this uh, particular area of the map? You have to uh, pay even more than what you did last time. But you're going to be waiting, and you're going to be waiting a lot. But I don't feel like that's a 
bad thing with this game specifically. You see, back in the day, there was one strategy game that I really well, didn't hate, which was Age of Empires. I actually really enjoyed my time playing that game because I got to take my time, I got to do things at my own pace, and the game didn't really punish me for that. And this one seems to be very much along the same veins. Uh, you have time to do everything. You gather the wood you need, you gather the food you need, you do whatever you need to do, and when you're good and ready, you get to go and do the, the quest that finishes the level. And that's great. I actually kind of like that. So much so that it's, uh, well, I guess it, it's a good thing that 2019's just started because it's a strategy game that I don't hate. So as far as I'm concerned, it gets three chairs because it's a strategy game that I don't hate. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Mr. We were, uh, Mr. Foxdog and I were talking about this on uh, Thursday after we were done streaming Borderlands. He found it just too generic and boring. He, he described it as a game that tries to do a lot of things and doesn't do any of them particularly well. I don't really see that. Uh, but Fo Foxy is more into that sort of strategy building 4X game stuff than I am. You can watch him play like Surviving Mars on Instagram mm. and stuff like that. I don't, I don't know. Do you, do you have any other final thoughts before say, we this go is to one the of the biggest things I saw, you know, after I get done writing everything, then I always go for uh, like confirmation bias. And it's like, all right, do the Steam page and let's mm -hmm. see what everyone else said. <laughs> Pretty much what everyone said, you know, the people who like it like what it does for the same reasons people like me. I'm like, just like it. I'm like, it, it's taking too long for anything to happen. And I mean, I think like within the first hour, I'm not saying I should have like a mega Viking Zilla machine running around killing things, but I should be doing more than try to keep motherfuckers happy. <laughs> I mean, I mean that the, that deal that DLC is incoming. Mecha Viking Zilla. <laughs> but yeah, happiness in this game is a resource like any other, and it's actually really easy to cheese it because winter starts and it's like organize a feast, and all of a sudden all of the production and the happiness raise, and it's like oh, so I can just outright negate the whole winter thing. How come you can't Neat. drink reindeer piss? <laughs> you absolutely maybe can. you can <laughs> I, I i don't see anything in the game that says you can't drink reindeer piss we researched that that would make some people extremely happy in that particular area indeed <laughs> okay coming up next we got we got we got some hate mail now with blank and it's about time we wrapped up this uh, the first uh do you have on a coat cast weekly is that a coat are you wearing no a it's coat? the hood from the review it looks like you're wearing a coat. <laughs> no coat you, 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 are, you are you are wearing a jacket pedro no it's a shirt it's one of those fake denim shirts yeah Hipster. Fake so, so, so you're wearing a crappy jacket is what you're saying <laughs> basically yeah uh but yeah it's the first show of 2019 and it's coming to an end so hey if you'd like to let us know what it is that we can do to improve or perhaps worsen linux gamecast weekly over 2019 you can let us know by going to linuxgamecast.com you hit the contact button it's a pretty self-explanatory form you don't even have the captcha at the end anymore it's uh yeah it's really really easy to get in touch so just make sure lgc weekly is the thing that you pick or if you'd like to ask jordan about relationship advice you can and if you're a game developer make sure to send us some keys three of them please <laughs> just, just pick a number man it doesn't <laughs> i mean if you, anything well, you, you, you could above you can send three. Us more than three keys yeah. <laughs> yes three, three or more okay cool <laughs> so first up we have steven and uh he um He's asking about streaming. Is there a recommended way to set up NVIDIA hardware-based streaming for Steam under uh, Ubuntu 18.10? I've got CUDA installed, NVIDIA can't repo, had to download the full 1.6 gigabytes archive, but getting a black screen or just a desktop on my streaming client. By the way, excellent show. Ouch. <laughs> so, um... Uh, Steam streaming? Are you talking about streaming as an in, in-home streaming, or are we talking about like OBS, uh, Twitch, YouTube streaming here, with like NVENC or something? Yeah, yeah, because that, 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 that's what that's what I that's what I read it as is like how do, how do I stream using NVEN code? Um, but, I, but yeah, I guess if you're talking about like Steam streaming, that's not even supported under Linux. Nope. 
Can't do it. No, uh, in-home streaming is support. No, no, no we're, 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 we're talking about the broadcast. Uh, yeah, that broadcasting. Yeah. <laughs> getting a black screen. Getting a black screen is just the desktop for my streaming client. Oh yeah, no, that, then he's definitely client. I, th I think then he's talking about. I uh, think he's talking about the, the Nvidia like Steam Link streaming or whatever. Yeah, the, the in-home streaming, which is where my confusion came from. It's like, okay, d d d you used a very generic term there, Stephen. <laughs> yeah, I, well, no, number one, CUDA doesn't have anything to do with it. Um, number two, if you're if you're getting if you're getting um, black screens on the streaming client, like the the thing that you're streaming the game to, there might be a there might be just be a driver issue because if you're getting the desktop, then that means like it's capturing stuff. Yeah, it's um, capturing the desktop. It could be a compositor issue. Could uh, be. You can try uh, because compositing uh, you usually want to capture the highest possible layer, so it captures everything that's on screen. Uh, but yeah, no, that's that's really vague. Uh, let us know, Stephen. Send us another bit of hate mail yeah. next week, and we'll totally may let you know. May maybe some <laughs> screenshots too. That would that would help. Yeah, hot. <laughs> <laughs> all, right, all right. Up next is uh, from Tabunet. Tabunet. Tabi. Tabunet. Tab you. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyway, anyway, yeah. he says, "Hi, freaks. Do you think Steam, Epic, or Discord will bring back game rentals? I would really like to rent a game over the weekend. They have free weekends already. Well, that kind of exists. It's called Steam refunds. Um, <laughs> <laughs> number number Hang two. On, no, uh, we, we, we suggest that you do that as many times as you can, and don't send us some hate mail when they tell you to go fuck off. Yeah. So 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 Please here's do. the thing. Game rentals was a hundred percent an artifact of the fact that of um, phys physical gaming media. You could go and rent like a cartridge or a console. Mm -hmm. I remember seeing they they rented they were renting at some PC games at Blockbuster, which is a recipe for exa for disaster. Um, but yeah, like considering you have to like install it with like a console. Well, not, not even with a console these days, cause you still have to install stuff onto the console now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I mean, game rentals aren't really a thing anymore. That's not really feasible in the, the sort of market that uh, we exist in today. I don't think at least. I think it's fucking untapped, man. Cause I remember being able to, like even in university, because we we want to have something to do on the weekends, you know, get smashed, and instead of you know, we weren't going to go out and fucking pay sixty bucks for a console game, and we'd pop over and get something for the weekend for like five pounds or something like that. And now, it's not completely infeasible because if you think that, about uh, it, yeah, okay. that's what I'm saying <laughs> is they do have free weekends, so yeah, it would be perfect. It wouldn't. I mean, I guess on Steam anyway. I'm just going from that knowledge. To, I wouldn't mind it if you would let me play something over the weekend or for like two days or three days. I'd give you five bucks to try it. It would be handy for like especially Proton titles. Yeah, yeah. And, I, mean, I mean, like again, Steam already has that particular uh, model. You're basically licensing the games. You don't really own them. That's what I'm saying. So I mean, you it just wouldn't have like be a... very hard. Yeah, it wouldn't be very hard to implement something like, okay, I'll pay you two bucks and you let me have the game for 48 hours. How about mm -hmm. that? Yeah, that that's something that could totally be done, unfortunately. Or um, uh, Comics, Comixology has a thing where, like, uh, you, you pay a subscription fee and you can't, like, issue one of a comic. But if you want to get the rest of this, of, like, every single comic for free. But if you want the rest of the series, you got to pay for that. So maybe something like you can get, here's a service where you can, like, pay a flat fee and get, like, a couple hours of gameplay. And then afterwards, if you want, you can buy the full game. And I can already see yeah. the arguments. And like, but Pirates is like, like listen, over again, it? <laughs> 100%, if somebody would be willing to rent your game, if that motherfucker is going to pirate it, they wouldn't be interested in renting it in the first place. True. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know. No, uh, piracy. He, the thing about piracy is, people who are going to pirate a game, they're always going to pirate the game. It's just those people that would be willing to play the game and pay for the game, uh, but they just can't be asked to deal with all the draconian DRM bullshit and the online subscription and everything else. That's when people who would otherwise buy the game resort to piracy it's a matter of service but yeah no it, it, it yeah the whole idea behind shareware as uh 
Discord is currently going on about that, is not a bad one. And it wouldn't go amiss in the age of, of digital distribution to have something like that in place. Well, I, I think it's can a see idea. a flaw, especially <laughs> with a bunch of indie games. I'm not knocking on indie games. As I mean, long. Okay, <laughs> you know what I'm about to finish saying. <laughs> Indie games are probably not the um, the market here because indie games are already cheaper by definition, and people will are far more likely to just fork over I don't know two bucks for a humble bundle that comes with a bunch of indie games than they are fifty or sixty bucks for well, a full on AAA game. I, I, I mean, just to, just to piggyback on that. I mean, bundles kind of throw that out the window, right? Because you can you can yeah. especially in the PC space, games are so cheap now. In for for consoles, game rentals make more sense because yeah, you're locked into that sixty dollar or eighty dollar price point. But with PC, you can always wait for stuff to go on sale for dirt cheap. What were you gonna say then? All right. Uh, one of the things I was gonna say about like indie games, and this could be not necessarily indie, but I would think um, this would hit them the hardest. A lot of indie games you can just beat in a day or two. So I'm thinking about time thing. You know, you give somebody a 48 hour pass, they're like, well, I'm done with it. But then again, you know, you don't get the full price, but you still get something. Uh, what, what, what did you say again, Jordan? I was not paying attention. Oh, I, I, I was, I was just saying that like the, 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 the price point in the PC space. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah so, uh, right. Um, yes. So I could see an argument, hundred percent, hundred percent valid point, but, if you're thinking, I'm trying to think back of, you know, being young and like, you know, triple digits or double digits, and maybe you have a Steam account and your allowance is, you know, $10 a week and it's locked into Steam. You can't buy bundles. Yeah. That, if you're that, just that, getting that, that, your that, allowance a... as a Steam card, uh, Unlikely as it may be. <laughs> that's, that's a weird ass parenting strategy. That's a good way to keep <laughs> yeah. track of what your kids have access oh, to. See, see, that, that's a new category for hate mail. Then teaches you how to raise your children. I'm oh. just... <laughs> see, in that respect, I think I'd be okay with my kids having access to Humble. You see, my kids you more know, so I, than Steam. My kids, they, they would have the I'd be able to track exactly what they're fucking playing. Both of them, heroin addicts. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Listen, I think on that bombshell. Let's cue the music. You can always find us around nine thirty Eastern Standard Moon Time. Where we're making the nonsense and uh, dancing like the fabulous, fabulous people. And look, I even brought Snake Repella. It's a brilliant thing. If you want to get hold of me, I'm at Vin Stone on Twitter. Follow me. Say something. I will say something back. Sometimes I might even click on the heart button. It's truly, truly a sexy thing. I'm Jordan Spung. You can find me advocating giving heroin to children because that's what originally it was for, for stopping your children from crying. You can find all that good stuff at The Burning Fool on Twitter, plus Jordan Swung on Google Plus until April, and at mass.linuxgamecast.com. You can follow me at Frojo. And I am Peter Mateus. You can always find me at Unaccounted For on Twitter, longing about the days when Coca-Cola actually had some cocaine in it. Okay, here's something we learned. Coca-Cola still has cocaine in it. Ha. <laughs> Uh-huh. <laughs> nope. Uh, I, 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 mean, I mean, if, 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 if you amount if you it added, if you added it, like, <laughs> it <laughs> as a flavoring fucking ingredient, it is denatured, but it yeah. still has. Well, yeah, yes. <laughs> it, it's a thing. I'm talking about full property cocaine. Motherfucker, you don't get to go. Uh, you, you're you're splitting nonsense. I'm gonna roll some credits. It's not splitting nonsense, it's cocaine. What are you worried about? Listen, listen the, the important thing is if you're going to add cocaine back into your Coca-Cola, you got to make sure to like cover the top of the bottle with your thumb and shake it up afterwards to make sure that it all blends in properly. We want to thank all the beautiful party patrons because this episode is fuck no way getting monetized. <laughs> well, all the elves are our sole source of income. <laughs> I, I mean, what you can get a Big Mac for the money we make on YouTube a month. This so. is true, <laughs> pretty much. If you, if you have coupons, yeah, without the meal deal, that's the thing. I don't even know what that is, but it seems legit. You can only get uh, the Big Mac. You can't get like the 
Shut up, and the, uh, <laughs> stop, stop talking about McDonald's. McDonald's, pay us, and then we'll talk about McDonald's. <laughs> this is a strictly McDowell's sponsored episode. <laughs> McDowell's, okay. Burger Ranch. This, oh, this is man, an Burger in and out Ranch house. Good you will respect our <laughs> burger beliefs. Five dudes. <laughs> yeah, Space five rag. dudes, burger, burgers, and fries. That's, that's the burger shop we're PC opening repair. up. PC repair. <laughs> PCP repair. <laughs> Uh, happy 2019, folks. Happy 2019. <laughs> Five dudes. <laughs>